Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Philip, and about a year ago, I posted a Dodge Cars game on Scratch, and you guys loved it. So, if you want to go watch that, it'll be right up here. Alright, so, I decided to make an upgraded version of it today. And basically, it's going to have a lot of parts, this game. And um, today, I'm just going to be making part one, where I'm going to make this uh, road that curves. And that's going to be, it's really cool how it curves. Compare it to the other video we made where it just went straight. So that's really cool. And also, um, in future videos, we're going to make things like these trees on the side of the road, these road signs on the side of the road. We've got the city in the background that gets bigger the closer we get to it. We've also got these obstacles on the road you have to dodge. And there's this night and day effect. At night, the car gets out its headlights. And I'm hoping to make this a complete game, which means I'm going to try to add like a menu, maybe a locker where you can pick the car design you want to play with. And also stuff like um, multiple levels and like a, um, a list of the names of the guys who got the high score. Also, um, you can comment down below any ideas you have that, we, uh, that I can add to the game to make it better. So let's get started. Click the create button and the first thing we're going to do is make the road sprite. Now the road sprite is just going to be like a small rectangle. So let's go ahead and paint a sprite. Let's select the rectangle, make the fill black let's say. And hold shift. To get it straight. Um, center it. And there we go. So what we wanted it to do is when green flag clicked first of all let's make it go to zero zero because we need to start at the center of the screen and um, to make it come towards us to give it a sensation that it's coming towards us we want it to change two things number one the size and number two the uh, uh, y position so to do that we need to change those for a certain amount of time until it reaches me not forever because we only want it to do it until it reaches like here next to me so to do that we will need a repeat until and basically that repeat until can be size is uh, bigger than something so if it reaches here the size will keep changing and if it reaches here it'll be a big size and if it's bigger than that then uh, that's when we'll stop doing it or we could do Y if it's smaller than um, certain amounts so that it gets here to the edge and I'm gonna go ahead and choose Y so if Y is smaller than negative 175 then um, so repeat until we are going to want to change the UI by something negative because it's coming down towards us so negative 5 and we are also going to want to um, change the size. But before we change the size, at the beginning, we have to make sure to set it to something small, like 1%. All right, and then change the size by something positive, because we want it to get bigger. So let's say change size by 5. Let's go ahead and test it. And I think that's good. Let's just change the size by something smaller. 3. Um, even smaller, maybe. 2. And I think that that's good. Now, our project is okay, but it's not perfect. There are a couple of problems, but we can only see those problems if we make multiple of these roadblocks. So that means clones. So let's go ahead and make clones to be able to see all the problems. So when green flag clicked, forever create clone of myself. Let's say wait 0.1 seconds, 0 0.1 seconds. Alright, and then we'll also make the original hide, and we'll show the clones, and let's not forget when I start as a clone. Alright. Okay, and also let's delete the clones once they reach the edge, once they reach us. So, like that. Now, if we look closer at this, we can see that let's make a full screen we can see that um the distance between the lines here and here 
are the same, uh, almost the same, and that's not how it's supposed to be. And so uh, is the line. The, the size of the line is almost the same as it is here. We want it to be a bigger difference between the size of the line here and the size of the line here. Here, let me show you a picture of real life. Here we have um, some lines. And basically here, the gap between them is pretty big. And here, you can barely see it. So that's how we want it to be. And then again, the planks, like the pieces of road, these are big. And these, like the same, you can't even see them almost. So that's what we want to do. So instead of changing size and y by a constant value every time, negative 5 and 2, we want it to change by something bigger every single step. So to do that, we will make a variable that I will call acceleration. Um, acceleration. Um, for the sprite only because we want each roadblock to have its own acceleration. And since each roadblock has its own acceleration, we have to set acceleration to something small every time a clone is created. All right. And then we also need to change acceleration by something and we can either change it by a constant value 1 5 7 10 I don't know or we can uh, change it by something different every time something bigger every time so we want to change by something bigger every time and to do that we will just need to multiply the value that was already there by something so what we want to do is let's say 0 0.1 times acceleration all right, so change acceleration by 0 0.1 times acceleration. And then we also want to do kind of the same thing for the y and the size. So that it depends on the acceleration. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now for the y, it's going to be um, negative 5 times acceleration. And the size will be um, 2 times acceleration. Let's go ahead and test it. And there we go. That is good. It's more like in that picture that I showed you how the distance here is definitely bigger than the distance here between the uh, roadblocks. That's good. Now, you might have been wondering why the first clone on this screen is very big. Like, it, that's it's not very big, but it's not size 1, like I said it to. So... That's because it's actually not size 1. It's, let's see. So we could see what size it is by just saying its size. We could do that. And there we go. Here, this one, we can see it starts with size 45. And that's because Scratch won't let you, for big images, it won't let you go higher than a certain value. And for smaller images like this one, it won't let you go um, lower than a certain value. And this one's small. You might be thinking this one's pretty big because it's like... All across the screen but it's actually very the height is very small so that's why it's very small all right so to, now we have to trick scratch into thinking that we have a bigger costume so to do that we'll just go ahead and make another costume and it'll just be let's say a big circle it doesn't have to be a circle by the way you can make it a square or something all right let's go ahead and name this costume so that we know what it is let's call it big costume Alright, and what we want to do is before and after every set or change size, we want to, um, so before, we want to change it to the big costume, so like right here, and then after we want to change it back to the normal uh, street block costume, road block costume, alright? Alright, there you go, let's go ahead and test this. And you can see now it still says its size and it says one, two or something small. It's not like 40 something like it was before. Now it actually works. That's good. Now we want to make the road curve. And right now it's not curving because obviously we set it to X zero. So we need to change its X to make it higher or lower value so that it can curve in a certain direction. So to do this, we will need a variable. I'm going to call it origin x and for all sprites because um, that's where all of the clones will get created in that place. That's where all of them will get created. 
So first of all, we need um, to go to X, origin X. That always goes to origin X. Every clone goes to origin X. And we also need to set origin X to zero at the beginning because we want the um, first clone to go to zero. And then what we'll also want to do is, let's say we want to take a curve. And how to make it look like we're taking a curve, let's say we're going to try to take a right cur curve. Um, so to do that, the first one goes to zero. And then the next clone will have to go to something bigger than zero. And then the next clone after that will have to go to something bigger than that last value and so on. So to do this, we will need to change the value of uh, origin x by, let's say I pick random negative 10 to 10 so that it could go either way. All right, so let's test it. And we can see that the roadblocks are curving, but we need them to look, take longer curves because right now it doesn't look good. So to do that, first of all, when we start taking a curve, we have to remember which direction we took the curve and so that we can make it go in that same direction for a longer amount of time so that it takes longer curves. So to do this, we'll just need to add a variable in which we'll remember in which way to turn. So we'll call it curve. And for all sprites, because we will just use it to remember in which way to curve the next clone. All right, so at the beginning, let's go ahead and set it to, all right, let's say we'll give it three values. All right, first value is negative one. And negative one will mean that we're curving left. Second value will be zero. It just means that it's going straight, no curves. And then one will be uh, curving right. All right, you can use whatever three values you want, but I'm just going to use these three. All right, so at the beginning, let's just set it to zero so that it doesn't curve. And then instead of this change origin x by pick random, since we don't want it to change by pick random every time, we will just um, change it depending on the value of curve. All right, so let's get rid of that change right there. And we will ask ourselves um, if curve equals negative one. Let's start with negative one. All right. And if curve equals negative one, then we want to change origin x by uh, something negative. So change origin x by negative, let's say 10. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate that if. Oh, whoops. Yeah, duplicate that if and change it to if curve equals one, then change origin x by 10. All right, we don't need to do anything if curve equals zero, because if curve equals zero, we don't need to change origin x because it's just gonna go straight. All right, so that is good. Now let's go ahead and change curve, the value of curve. So to do that, we don't wanna change it too often. So what we'll do is simulate us uh, throwing a die and if it lands on a specific face, then we'll um, change curve by something. So let's go ahead and um, ask ourselves if, and like I said, simulate a, a dice getting thrown. If a pick random from one to six, because a die um, equals, let's say one, then we have to um, set curve to a pick random from negative one to one. Because remember, our three values for curve are negative one, zero, and one. All right, so let's go ahead and test this. All right, and here we see it. it is turning. And there is one problem with this. And um, if it gets to one side, like right now, oh, wait, yeah, like right there. Uh, if it gets to one, two to one side, like right there, if it gets to the left, too much to the left, let's say, um, we won't be able to see the road. And uh, we want to always see the road. So to fix this problem, let's say it goes too much to the right, we want to bring it to the left. If it goes too much to the left, we want to bring it to the right. 
All right, so to do this, we will ask ourselves if um, origin x is uh, greater than 200 or if origin x is smaller than negative 200 then we want to set curve to the opposite value because we want it to go the other way so let's go ahead and set curve to and then the other way the opposite would be zero minus curve All right, there we go. Now I went ahead and drew other costumes. So like other types of road, we have this grass, we have this gray pavement, and then these two sides of the road. Now, um, what happens is that when I turn on the program and I click on these, it does not change to that costume. And that is because I have this code right here, switch costume to costume one, and costume one is just that line that appears. So to fix this, we are going to make a variable. I'm going to call costume. And we're going to make this variable to remember the uh, current costume. All right, for the sprite only, because we want to remember the current costume. OK. And when I start as a clone, we have to set costume to. And then um, it, it, if I'm going to set costume to costume name. But it can be number two. It'll be the same exact thing. I'm just going to do name. And um, what we want to do is switch costume in two. And instead of costume one, it's going to be costume, our variable costume. All right. And let's go ahead and test it. So start it. And we click on this green one. There we go. It simulates like this kind of grass road. And then we got this one, or this kind of pavement road. And then this one, like it, it's two sides of the road. So that is good. Now that is it for part one. And you can go ahead and play around with these numbers to just see how the pr program will look. And just figure out whatever numbers you want here. You can change the Y by like anything, negative two, negative three, something, anything you want. I'm gonna go ahead and see how negative two looks. So it's making it wider and um, change size by, I don't know, maybe a 2.5. You could try that. And you can play around, use any number you want. Here we can make them appear more often. Let's do it 0 0.2. You can make it anything like 0 0.3, like I said. And let's go ahead and see how other costumes would look. So this grass one looks okay. It doesn't look that good though. And we've got this pavement. The pavement one looks pretty good. And then this one doesn't look too good, but it's okay. And you can go ahead and explore, make your own costumes, and see whatever you find. And make sure you comment down below if you create anything that looks really cool. And so I'll see you guys in part two, in which we will create the background, the car, the trees, and like street signs. So thanks for watching.